Hello everyone! Welcome to a detailed Beesmith guide on Bee Swarm Simulator. This video will have many sections, each timestamp so you can easily skip to or find what you're looking for. My name is Xnose and I've been playing Bee Swarm Simulator since 2018 and I can help you guys finish Beesmith as much as possible. Before we get into the video, I want to clarify to you all that while this is a Beesmith guide, I will keep things vague but true enough to allow anyone to use this guide at any given year to understand what they're doing for Beesmas. So, it's weird that the guide starts off with this, isn't it? But it's actually for a good reason. During Beesmas, Bee Bear, the NPC that gives you most of your Beesmas quests, rewards you with awesome things, such as eggs, rare waxes, and expensive materials. But on top of all of that, it also rewards you with a free Cub Buddy and a free Festive Bee. So if you didn't already buy these and would like them, you can easily get them during Beesmas. Being able to unlock all of the quests has a lot of requirements. These requirements are 35 bees, honey mask, gummy mask, or gummy boots, and all 31 science bear quests completed for translators. When you first start Beesmas, you're going to be going around collecting as many quests as you can from all the NPCs and your quest tab will be filled to the brim with a bunch of quests. This can lead to confusion and give you a hard time to know exactly what to start off with. Knowing and keeping track of which quest is Bee Bear's can help you stay on track. Usually, in the beginning, Bee Bear will ask you to complete the quests from the bears found in the starting area of the game and slowly progress up. Bee Bear's questline is the main Beesmas questline. The only time you really need to worry too much about helping other NPCs is if your Bee Bear's quest requires you to open a present box or needs you to use a Beesmas exclusive interactable such as the gingerbread house. I'm not saying don't do all the Beesmas quests, but if you're having too much difficulty with one, just focus more on the ones geared towards Bee Bear. Snowflakes and gingerbread bears are used as currency for the Bee Bears catalog. It's important to keep gingerbread bears and not use them as much as possible since you'll definitely want to buy a lot of things from this shop. I know you'll be tempted to use them to try and gift your bees because gingerbread bears have a chance of gifting bees, but it's better to use them to gift your bees once Beesmas is over rather than waste them. You'll definitely want to know how to get as many snowflakes and gingerbread bears as possible, and luckily I know how. For gingerbread bears, the best way to get them is killing bosses. Additionally, these mobs also drop gingerbread bears, so make sure to kill them whenever you can. And here is all the mobs that drop snowflakes. Snowbear when killed drops snowflakes as well as tickets and rare bee quips, but something you probably didn't know is that in Bee Bear's questline, there are a few that requires you to collect snowflake tokens from Snowbear. So speedrunning your Snowbear's level is a really dumb sticky idiot move. Please do not do this. Keep your snow bear to a level that you can kill, please. For your Beesmas quests, you might come across some that asks you to get puff shrooms in specific fields. Puff shrooms can be spawned in either by your planters that you place down, having a chance for them to have brown smokes, which then produces puff shrooms, or using a ticket planter, which guarantees the spawn of puff shrooms. That's pretty hard, I know, you're relying heavily on luck. Luckily, puff shrooms do naturally spawn every hour 15 and every hour 45. Another important thing to know is how puff shrooms work. You get better rewards depending on how much pollen you contribute to the puff shroom. So popping puff shrooms you are able to pop will net you good rewards, such as waxes and the likes, and can go by much faster with people under or around your level. But if your goal is to pop rarer or higher level puff shrooms and have a chance at an extremely rare drop like a turpentine, 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 having people higher level than you can make that goal happen. Knowing how puff shrooms travel can help you a lot in getting them to the fields you need. Take the time to memorize this chart or come back to this video whenever you need. For your Beesmas quests, you will most likely get some asking you for specific nectars. You can get nectars by planting planters in fields. Only one type of planter can be planted at any time with a limit of one per field. A player can only have a maximum of three planters active. If a planter's crop starts turning brown, it means that the field has degraded and it grows a lot slower. It's best to move planters around to different fields 
that have not been used yet in order to avoid this from happening. Planters grow faster if you are in the same field as them, and having a shy bee or multiple shy bees in your hive also makes it grow faster, as they have a special passive called Nectar Lover. Here is how to get every type of nectar. Take the time to memorize this, or come back to this video whenever you need. An additional thing to note is that your beesmith quests might ask you to collect whirligigs or honeysuckles. Planters harvested in the pine tree forest have a higher chance of dropping whirligigs than other fields. Petal planter gives the most whirligigs, although blue clay planter has the highest chance of dropping them. Planters in blue flower field, rose field, and especially sunflower field give honeysuckles more often than others. And the blue clay planter drops honeysuckles as a bonus drop. In the RoboBear Challenge, you may find yourself with only a few bees that you pick from every round. Here, your bees level and stats are really important, as well as your amulets, gear, and nectars. These will all carry you through the challenge. In this challenge, mobs will appear to try and stop you from completing the rounds. Mosquitoes will most commonly be the ones to annoy you throughout the challenge. They shoot where you're standing and cannot predict where you will be, so moving around as often as possible will help you avoid their attacks, which lowers your speed and pollen collection. Cogmowers, on the other hand, will only spawn in certain fields when first introduced, and will then become just as annoying as mosquitoes. Golden Cogmowers are a rare breed of Cogmower. They drop cogs as a reward if you kill them, and can only be found in either the Clover Field, Pineapple Patch, Pumpkin Patch, or the Mountaintop Field on these specific rounds. Cog turrets are no joke. They first appear on round 11 and can become untargetable. They can one-shot you if you're not careful, however they do shoot in a straight line, so if you're paying attention you can easily avoid them. Lastly is the Mega Mexquito. They first appear on round 15 and shoot you for a total of 6 shots every time they attack. All of these mobs destroy the flowers in the field that you are in, so finding a perfect balance of staying away from them to spawn tokens to collect pollen and killing them to have some peace of mind is very important and might take you a couple of tries to find your rhythm. Some beesmith ornaments change slightly every year, however these ornaments are almost always the exact same. Giving your presence to obtain certain ornaments first will help you do much better during the beesmith event, so make sure to remember which ornament is good and which ornament isn't. Take the time to memorize this or come back to this video whenever you need. These Beesmiths exclusive interactables can reward you with super cool rewards, or help you out a ton. Knowing what they do is super useful, especially if you don't have all of your Science Bear translators and want to know which one to use first. An important thing to note is if you complete your stick bug Beesmiths quest, the decoration is a festive nymph buff that can be obtained anytime you kill festive nymphs during the stick bug challenge. Take the time to memorize this or come back to the video whenever you need. Quests will have you struggling, so the important thing to keep in mind is what you want your goals to be for this beesmiss. If you cannot complete all the quests, don't feel bad. It happens to the best of us, and if you completed what you had in mind, you're a winner no matter what. I know many of you have skipped to this point of the video. I definitely recommend you go back and watch the entire thing because you'll need the information. Now, I would like to take a quick moment to thank everyone who helped me make this guide as well as everyone who watches my streams every time I go live. You can catch one of my streams over at twitch.tv slash xnose. The link will be in the description. If this video helped you out a lot, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And if you want to communicate with me or other community members, you can check out my Discord server. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll smell you later. Merry Beesmas.